Today on Trucks, we'll finish up Project Outdoorsman by bolting on a brush guard and a removable winch. After that, it's time to find out if the totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee for 1999 is everything it's cracked up to be, on road and off. Then it's back to the shop for week two of Paint Tech. We've already shown you how to prep your project. Next, we'll show you how to use filler and lay down primer. That's all today on Trucks. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's show. A few weeks ago we started Project Outdoorsman by taking this 99 F-150 and making it a home away from home with a top-up camper. Of course any real hunter or fisherman needs more than just a place to hole up at night. He's always on the hunt for that perfect fishing hole or hunting ground that nobody else knows about. These Mickey Thompson wheels and tires are going to help get him there without sacrificing his ride home, which is real important, especially if he doesn't catch his limit. Now, we found it doesn't matter if you're a hunter or an extreme off-roader. If you spend enough time off the beaten path, you will get stuck. The problem is you never know which end of the vehicle is going to have the best winch points. And obviously, if you have a permanently mounted winch, you've got some limitations. That's why we're going to go with Warren's Transformer Mounting Kit. That includes the mounting plate, the brush guard and all the brackets, as well as a 9,000-pound electric winch. But before we can start bolting things on, we need to get this plastic shroud out of the way. Now's the perfect time to check the stock bumper to make sure it's aligned correctly. Because if it's crooked, your new brush guard's going to be crooked as well. <laughs> now that Mel's got that plastic out of the way, we can mount these lower brackets. Now they go right here to the bottom of the frame rail using the existing holes. And once it's loosely bolted in place, come up here to the upper bumper bolt and make a mark on the upper plastic piece. Then remove it. Hey Mel, I need to have you cut this. You got it, man. Now the reason you need to have a reference point is so you can cut a slot on the plastic for your main bracket. A hacksaw or a pair of tin snips will get the job done here. Once the driver's side is cut, use the measurements in the kit to notch out the passenger side. Finally, you need to cut half-inch slots in the lower plastic fascia for clearance. Now, once this is all cut out, you can put on the main brackets. These go right to the stock bumper bolts. Make sure you leave it loose so you can adjust it later on. Now we can get the side members in place. They hook up directly to the main brackets using carriage bolts. Now, at this point, if all you're going to do is put on the grill guard, just bolt on the cross tubes and you're done. But since Mel and I have been known to break a headlight or two, we're going to put on these brush guards for a little extra protection. And since they're so easy to install, there's really no reason not to. The only trick is you have to tilt the transformer kit forward to get enough clearance to mount them. Once they're firmly in place, go ahead and crank down your bolts and you're finished. I'll tell you what, Mel, not only is this going to give us some protection, but it really looks good. It really does. Now the best thing about this kit is you got a couple options. You can permanently mount a winch here, or you can use the removable kind by bolting in this plate. Of course, a transformer kit wouldn't be complete without some off-road driving lights, so we're going to go with these Warren 100 waters that'll light up the trail for us at night. And since they bolt right up to the brush guard, you don't have to do any drilling either. They also come complete with a switch, relay, and wiring. Hey Stace, you about ready for the wiring? Yeah, now comes the fun part. <laughs> Anytime you use a high amp accessory, it's a good idea to use a relay. This allows you to run directly from the battery without having to splice into your original wiring harness. Now the relay is turned on and off by the switch in the cab and it only pulls about 2 amps from the ignition. But the relay itself will send 30 amps directly to your lights without the threat of burning anything up. While Stace is hooking up the relay switch under the hood, I went ahead and ran some wires through the firewall using a rubber grommet. Now all I have to do is finish up the hookups and mount the switch on the dash. Remember, there's no right or wrong place to put it. Just make sure it's accessible. Hey Stace, you ready to check them out? Yeah, Mel, go ahead and hit them. That's what we want to see. Now remember, just because you can see at night doesn't mean you won't get hung up. 
And the crown jewel of this project is a winch. Now, like we said before, this winch is removable. First thing we need to do is hook up the quick disconnect cables. Now they go right under this cover in place of the stock cables. After that, bolt the fair lead roller to the mounting plate, and then the winch. Worm provides a six foot cable to reach the front and you can get up to 24 feet to reach the rear. Of course one end goes to the battery and we permanently mounted the other end to the brush guard here. After you've run the lines, make sure you tie them up out of the way. Now when you find yourself buried up to the axles, just slide in the winch, hook up the quick connect, then the remote, Now you're ready to pull your way to freedom. Speaking of freedom, you're free to make a trip to the fridge because we need to take a break. Trucks will be right back. Speaking of the fridge, is that pizza still in there from yesterday? No, you ain't. Welcome back to the shop. Now that we've taken care of the front of Project Outdoorsman with a removable winch, brush guard, and off-road lights, we're going to step back and take a look at the sides of this F-150. You know, there's a lot of options out there. You can go with sidebars or running boards, and the tubular look is really popular right now, especially if you're into rock crawling. But if you've ever tried to jump up on one with muddy boots on, you know that can get pretty interesting. So if you're looking for something that's strong and you can stand on, running boards are the only way to go. DZ makes these polished aluminum boards that feature these rolled beads for traction. Now also a lot of surface to step up on here and that's really nice. They also give you the option of using a mud flap or a plastic end cap and the best part is they come with all the hardware to hang them. Now you have to drill three mounting holes for your hangers and if you can handle a tape measure it's pretty much a no-brainer because DZ provides all the measurements for your application. Once your marks are made, drill the holes and bolt on the hanger brackets. While Mel preps the forge for the boards, I've gone ahead and assembled these main brackets and put on the end caps. Now the brackets go right to the bottom of the boards and that's what holds your weight. Now you may notice that each one of these brackets is a little bit different, so it's important to keep them in the right order or they'll never hook up right. All right, Mel, these boards are ready to go. Cool, let's hang them. Now obviously these little brackets aren't going to support any weight. That's what the main brackets are for. But before we can do anything, we need to make sure everything is level. While Mel makes sure everything stays level, I'll mark the holes for the brackets and drill them out. And then crank them down. Now you might have to use a little uh, friendly persuasion on these brackets to make them fit. Well, I go about 200 pounds, and as you can see, these boards aren't even trying. And if you're not into the polished aluminum look, you can paint them to match the color of your truck. Just make sure you use a good flex agent in the paint so it doesn't chip off. Now that Project Outdoorsman is ready to go out and hunt down some fish and game, we need to know where we're going and how to get back. Of course, a common myth, or urban legend if you will, is that most guys don't like to stop and ask for directions. And with the Magellan GPS 315, you won't ever have to again. Now, GPS stands for Global Positioning System, which means this little baby plugs into the satellites orbiting the Earth and can not only tell you where you're at on land, water, anywhere in the world, but it also can tell you how far you've got to go and, heck, help you get there. About the only thing it doesn't do is turn the wheel and shift the gears for you. You still get to do that yourself. But we don't need a fancy device for me to tell you where we're at in the show. It's time to take a break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hey, man, can you find my wife on that thing? Oh, uh, let me see. Let me see. There she is. Where is she? Speeding down Highway 24. Oh, man. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. You know, 50 years ago, Jeep introduced the two-door Jeepster that was powered by the famed four-cylinder Willys. 
Ever since then, Jeep has pretty much set the standard for production off-road vehicles. Their latest effort, the totally redesigned Grand Cherokee for 1999. Part of the reason Jeep has been able to attain such legendary status is because they test all their vehicles on the Rubicon Trail, <laughs> probably one of the most demanding off-road trails in the country. But we decided to see how good it really is with uh, a few tests of our own. First up, the articulation ramp. It's showing an RTI of 486. Not too bad for a totally stock vehicle. Let's see what that translates to off-road. The new Grand Cherokee rides on the same wheelbase, but has a one-inch wider track for stability and is two inches higher for better ground clearance. The new body design front and rear allows for better approach and departure angles as well. Our Jeep has the new 4.7 liter V8 that replaces the 5.2, but at 235 horsepower, it's stronger than its predecessor. Now that's coupled with the all-new Quadratrack 2 transfer case that keeps the vehicle moving even if only one wheel has traction. Well, we put it to the test, and as you can see, that makes this vehicle more than capable off-road. Not everyone who owns the new Grand Cherokee is going to go off-road, though, so Jeep added some refinements to its on-road manners as well. For 99, an all-new front and rear suspension offers a smoother ride with less body lean. A brand new steering gear reduces the turning circle by a full foot for better maneuverability, not to mention it has the best brakes in its class. And speaking of class, you can tell that Jeep has that with one look at this interior. First off, you've got these incredibly comfortable leather seats that sit you up high enough to give you great visibility over the hood. And for those of us that are a little tall, Jeep didn't skimp on headroom either. They gave you an extra half inch this year. The dash features wood graining that surrounds dual climate controls, which is better than any marriage counselor. Now here's a great safety feature. The driver has all primary controls right here at his fingertips. <laughs> Even the stereo is here on the wheel. Of course, the whole purpose of an SUV is to carry people and cargo. And as you can see, that won't be a problem with this vehicle. We also give Jeep two thumbs up for retaining the legendary look of the Jeep grille, even if it has been raked back a bit. Bottom line, at about 36000 the Grand Cherokee Limited will cost you. But then again, anything worthwhile always does. Welcome back to the shop. Now we showed you last week how to strip paint using mechanical and chemical strippers. This week we're going to show you how to prep the surface for a quality paint job. Now I'm using a hammer and dolly here to straighten out this edge. If you do this, make sure you use light strokes. Don't hit it too hard or you'll bend it all over the place. Once you have the metal dollied out to the shape you want it, you're ready to use filler. In this case, we can't use a dolly because you can't get to it underneath. Remember, filler should never be more than a quarter inch thick. If it looks like it's going to be, you need to do more metal work first. Also keep in mind, filler is not a bad thing as long as you use it properly. Mix it according to the directions, then apply it using a firm pressing motion, tapering it at the ends. Try to make as few passes as you can and make sure to watch for air bubbles. Now at this point, you should have already decided what paint system you're going to use. We're going to use House of Colors because they pretty much set the standard on cool custom paint. Now it's important to use the same manufacturer throughout the whole project because remember, painting is a chemical process and not all manufacturers' products are compatible with each other. If you mix them up, you might end up with a big mess and have to start all over. You can start working the filler as soon as it starts to get rubbery. You'll want to use a coarse paper here to rough shape the filler. We recommend 80 grit. Once you have the basic shape you want, give it some time to dry. While Mel's taking a break from sanding, I'm going to go ahead and show you the steps we're going to use with this House of Color system. The first thing we're going to put on is an epoxy primer. Now that goes right on the bare metal. Now once that's sanded and prepped out, we're going to put on a white base coat. Then we'll follow that with our color coats. The last thing we'll put on is clear. 
Now I know this sounds like a lot of work, but leaving out any of these steps will have an effect on your final paint job. Once the filler is dry, block sand it using progressively finer grit. Make sure to use an X pattern to prevent any waves. Also keep in mind, it's important to use the right size sanding block or tool depending upon how large an area it is that you're repairing. All right, Stace, this piece is about ready to be shot. Now we can shoot on some primer surfacer. Before you do, make sure you have the proper respirator and body protection. If the paint you're using has isocyanates in it, a charcoal style respirator is not good enough. You need something with a fresh air supply. Now I'm going to set the spray pattern of the gun. Adjust the flow rate so you get a nice square pattern from about 8 inches away. Start your pass beyond the panel and as you get close, start the flow of paint and go the length of the panel. You'll want to use at least three coats of surfacer. That's going to do the job, Stace. At this point, you need to let it properly dry, and depending on the temperature and humidity, that can take anywhere from two to three days to complete. After that, you can start the most time-consuming and tedious part of the whole project, and that's block sanding. Make sure you join us next week, because that's when we'll take you step-by-step step through that process before we lay down some color. Let's say you've gone to a swap meet because you want to put a little more grunt in the rear end of your pickup, say in the form of a 411 gear ratio. The problem is the seller can't quite seem to remember what the ratio is. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, fortunately, there's a couple ways to check this. Now, if the gears are exposed, simply count the number of teeth on the ring gear and divide it by the number of teeth on the pinion. This will give you your ratio. Now, if the gears are not that easy to see, come down here, make a mental note of where your yoke is, and then come up here and mark one of your teeth. Now rotate the input shaft and count the number of times, one, that it takes to make one complete rotation of the ring gear, two and three quarters. Two and three quarters turns equals a 275 gear ratio. That's good for the street, but it's not going to give you the grunt of a 411. After spending $30 million in 1953, Ford debuted the F100 pickup, considered by many historians to be a milestone in truck design. And now truck gear, parts, tools, and equipment for pickups and sport utilities. A few weeks ago, we showed you a carpet stain remover by Lifter One, and it works so good, we thought we'd turn you on to another one of their products called Bug and Tar Remover. A 12-ounce can goes for about $4 and dissolves tar, bugs, and tree sap from the paint, chrome, and windows of your vehicle in a matter of seconds. It's also citrus-based and has no kerosene in it, so it's safe to use on your clear coat finishes as well. For those of you that do a lot of towing, you know that having the wrong size ball for the hitch can be a major pain. Well, that's where the Roto-Ease Manual C4 Hitch Ball Mount can be a major pain reliever. It comes with the three most commonly used balls and slides into any standard 2x2 two two receiver. It's also adjustable up to 12 inches vertically for lifted or lowered vehicles. And with a 10,000 pound towing capacity, you can rest assured that your trailer is not going to pass you on the interstate. Handle all your towing chores with the Roto-Ease for about 265 bucks. Mickey Thompson has unleashed an all-new extreme terrain tire, introducing the Baja Claw. The new tread pattern and extra-long side biter design allows you to dig out of any terrain you can imagine. The Claw also features a 20-inch contact patch on the 33 13.5 and a six-ply cut-resistant sidewall compound for extra strength and stability. Climb your way to the top of any trail with the Baja Claw for about $200. That's going to do it for this week's truck gear. Here's a preview of next week's show. Everybody wants more horsepower, so we'll take you step by step through the pursuit of 450 horses as we build up a 383 stroker. After that, we'll take you for a rare ride down memory lane in a 46 Hudson pickup. 
Then it's back to the shop to finish up our three-week series on paint tech. That's all next week on Trucks. Well, that's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks for being with us, and we look forward to trucking with you again next week. What is this? <laughs> You'll never guess. You probably, what is it? Look. Tracks. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What These are, are tracks. Uh, what did you get? Trucks is an RTM production. <laughs>